What's up everybody? You guys know who I am. I've been documenting bodybuilding for years on YouTube. As a matter of fact, I created this very niche talking about the history of bodybuilding, about events, being pretty much the TMZ of bodybuilding, giving some news and some flashbacks and so on and so forth. The best backs in history, the best triceps in history, Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman, Sean Ray, all the, the golden era guys of the 90s uh, until the today's era in a sense and needless to say that i know pretty much the who's who uh, of the game you name the pro the top pro i talked with you name the guy i talked with not only him his guru uh, probably his family too and so on and so forth so uh, i don't need any kind of introduction uh in in this field uh, the fact of the matter is, you guys also know that I've never met uh, these guys, even the local guys who train in my own city who are pros. I refrain from meeting them. That's a decision I made a long time ago. And uh, with time, and as I stand today making this video in 2017, that was a very positive decision for me, and I stand by it. And probably I will never meet any of them again, right? You guys also noticed since about a year or so, especially since Mr. Olympia 2016, my passion about uh, bodybuilding faded greatly. I could not even hide it, right? I came back making videos uh, about anything, about uh, social media, uh, put in some uh, gym fail videos, uh, you name it, some funny videos. I stopped reporting uh, completely from bodybuilding because I was completely fed up and there are reasons uh, for that uh, that I was still fomenting until lately right and as a legacy as a legacy that I want to leave uh, to you guys to my faithful followers because I owe this to you guys and it was a, a moral question for me uh, I shared it with some people but I really have to tell you this guys right my biggest concern would be to uh, to convey the wrong message, right? Because I guarantee you, you guys know me, I was really passionate about it. Uh, but you guys need to comprehend. I'm following bodybuilding before even the advent of the internet, right? Back in the day, like let's say 1993, Mr. Olympia, which was, I was really passionate about it, like Dorian Yates. Uh, versus the upcoming Flex Wheeler who won like two shows, the Iron Man and the Anna Classic, and they collided there, and then of course Dorian won, and the next year he hurt his uh, left biceps. There was no internet, there was no Windows 95, right? So we were following this via pretty much magazines who come late. I was in Algeria, guys, right? It was a third world country. So the magazine has to come from France, it's in French and whatever, so it's late. So that was all that passion and that expectation behind it. So uh, this, uh, you guys know uh, all the story I told you about in my previous videos. If you are faithful followers and fans, you absolutely know this. So indeed, I did have passion about it until I knew too much. I knew too much. Last year, I made a video which went quite viral. I said body pro bodybuilders are broke or something like that and i was completely shocked like how how on earth does a guy belongs to a so-called sport and he's number six in the world we're not talking about in his city like in the freaking world like we're 7.25 billion people this guy is number six i was referring to roly winkler broke like no contract or nothing and i voiced my Concern. Is this normal? And there, there are some people, like some other outlets, trying to come at me, and of course I don't respond to them. When I, when I don't respond to somebody, it's not that I don't have an answer. It's like I disregard that person. Like intellectually, when I disregard a person, I don't even mention the name of that person. It's like you're you're too low. You're you're so nothing. I don't answer you, right? Anyway. Uh, but then again, there was a trainer guru who was supposedly interviewed in that outlet who came literally to my defense. He said, bro, if uh, if they're not paid well, then don't call them even pros. Why do you even call them pros? So he shut him out. But then again, me, uh, needless to say, I mean, I mean, despite all that, uh, and above that, 
it boggled my mind. I mean, how come them? You you are like one of the biggest people in the world, and the best in your discipline in the world, yet you you still have nothing. You're broke at forty. Just doesn't make sense, right? And of of course, it's not the only guy I know personally. I know all of them, right? Do I have to prove that to you guys? No, you guys know that that I interact with these guys on social media, and they send me things. I send them things and so on and so forth. The fact of the matter is, uh, you know, it's not personal about these guys. Hence, I'm showing a picture of a guy I don't, I don't even know. I mean, this is a still from a previous video I made about bubble guts, right? Or pregnant bodybuilders for that matter, right? That's a different story. But the, the my concern and my moral issue was the message I'm conveying to the whole world. Because I created the, this niche making, I mean, documenting bodybuilding on YouTube right of course people were doing it on magazine or but on but on youtube nobody was doing top five best packs top 10 this or re reviewing the events nobody was doing this before me i created this niche it is what it is i started making videos emulating uh scooby back in the day he was like i think the first making videos about lifting and training i did that and then everybody was doing that and i stopped doing that since a long time ago i don't do training videos for all i know i just document this and talk about the history of bodybuilding until I get fed up and the, 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 the big question and big conundrum and the dilemma it really is a moral one did I convey wrong messages to people to teens all over the world right did I basically send some guys banking on bodybuilding and putting all their coins on it and thinking, bro, I'm gonna be pro bodybuilder, it will be my life. It is not. Not not only it is not, and thank God I'm, I'm you know, I don't wanna name names, I'm, I'm showing some old guys like this guy, Jean-Pierre Fuchs, he's out of the game. But I can tell you this, guys, bodybuilding is not a job. It really is not. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, me too, I believed back in the day that all these supercars, they own them, uh, they were very all. I mean, they're all set. No, they're not all set, and that's why that's why you see all of these old comers trying to come back to stay relevant and to put their names uh, out there. I feel sorry for them because they need to find a way to to uh, make a living. So they try to put their name there and come back in the game, probably to launch a supplement to or do things like that right some others went to jail lately and these guys were stars they were like top seven mr olympia back in the day you know what i mean and next thing you know they were dealing stuff and you know they want to think but you, you it, it begs the question do they have an alternative because a lot of them the guys i know and again i'm not gonna make it persons and and name names out of respect okay that's not my job but Bro, there is no money up there, tell you that much. Tell you that much, they're stressed about it, right? They're stressed about it. Furthermore, furthermore, it's like a perfect storm of of problematics, in a sense, of, of issues. These guys, like Jean-Pierre Fuis, for that matter, this guy was pushed to be this big. When he, uh, this guy, first time we saw him, everybody saw him was in 96, 21 years ago. He was invited in Miss Olympia. It was called the Invitational presence so he did not even qualify yet they they invited him i remember that thing when he they invited him he was big he had a crazy back right he wasn't that hard because he didn't take everything that these guys were taking in the u.s and then he moved to the u.s to try to to be as hard and as grainy and next thing you know he gained a bubble gut right but these guys they're pushed to be at certain standards. I do recall the presenter of Mr. Olympia, may he rest in peace, Ben Weeder, when he was uh, talking to the crowd, he said he was saying, I just saw these guys backstage and they're huge, I can tell you, they're big, they're very big. And the crowd was like, whoa! Now you need to comprehend, the, uh, the crowd there, mo most of them are bodybuilders, they're really aficionados, really passionate about it, and unfortunately, a lot of them are bigorexia-oriented minds. They love the big guys, the big John, the big Mike, the big Tony, shit like that. So the bigger the guy is, they salute that. So they don't care about the freaking bubble gut or 
freaking vacuum or golden freaking era. No, right? You need to comprehend that. And I don't you guys think since I am the inventor of the name anabolic chicken, I created that freaking term, right? You guys know that. Just like me, I created the term bubblegut bonanza, which is right now a slang in freaking fitness. Don't you guys think that I know a thing or two about these, what these guys go through on a daily life? It will boggle your, uh, your mind. Unfortunately, YouTube right now is triggered about about this substances so i have to call it like vitamin s and this and that but if i could tell you the regimen that these guys have to take on a weekly basis most of you teens would probably have a heart attack just just understanding the sheer size of the thing and you know what between them like these guys they tell me supposedly what the other guy is taking like i'm talking about top top guys up there right a guy Telling me about his foe, about his nemesis. He told me, bro, that guy is on six grams, bro. That guy is on seven grams. That's why he's like that, right? And they talk, they badmouth each other. Next thing you know, they're all taking humongous amount of shit. It reminds me of Craig Tyrus. Craig Tyrus, who is in jail. Uh, not jail, but prison. I think it's for life because of a murder, as you guys know. He was interviewed while he was in jail, he was talking about bodybuilders who used to compete like until like two or three years ago. He named it by name. He said, that dude is taking this and this amount of that. It's just mind boggling. You know what I mean? When you see a guy doing a live video on his freaking Instagram with his puffy eyes and puffy whatever face, uh, you know, whether he is off season or not looking, you know, you think it's normal? You think it's normal? It's not a life. So, it is a special, grueling life. And I receive DMs, direct messages on a daily basis from teens telling me, bro, do you think I have a potential? My response, my answer is usually generic. I said, bro, do not be a bodybuilder. So this is the message I try to convey to you guys now. Just do not be a bodybuilder. Do not bank on it. Some people tell me, yeah, you know, then you bro, I'm so passionate about it. I love it so much. Big deal. Tell him, bro, be something. Be an engineer. Have your career. Be an entrepreneur. That happens to lift. Okay, go to the gym after your job, after your school, and so on and so forth. Do not bank on it. Right? So Louis Marco will not be. My legacy will not be that, okay, be a bodybuilder bank on it, uh, put everything, effort on it. And believe me, these pros cannot be anything else. When they are pros, they cannot afford to be anything else. You need to comprehend that, kid. You need to understand that. When Boston Lloyd, who is still my friend, I don't agree with his lifestyle by freaking no means, right? I don't salute even his physique. For me, he's a bubblegut bonanza. He's an oil spill on record. But... I do salute his honesty when he was telling you that he was going to his fridge seven or eight times a day, bringing whatever and putting it in his thing. That's the truth, right? And when these guys, they change gurus, they go from one guru to another. So they tell the new guru what the old guru was given them, right? So that guru is telling me, bro, do you know that guy? Who was training the other guy, bro, he, he gives them this and this and this. It's like, it's crazy. So even between them, these gurus, they're boggled and they're shocked by the competition with the other guys is taken, right? And if you guys think that the 90s, of course, there are a lot of people passed away from the 90s era. The 90s era, I mean, I cannot even count how many uh, uh, rest in peace videos I, I did. Wait and see for today's era, when, when it will happen. The bubblegut era did not do damage yet, but it's gonna happen. This is what's up. So what I'm telling you here, do not idolize things that are nonsensical. It's not the same ball game as soccer or football. It's not Ronaldo or Messi. These guys are rich for real, right? It's not Michael Jordan. It's not golf. It's not the NBA, you need to comprehend that, boys. You, you need to freaking comprehend that. 
And the fact that Mr. Olympia this year invited Kai Green and Kai Green said nothing in a sense. But Kai Green speaks to me, right? And in, in riddles and things like that, but we still communicate, right? That's why, I mean, you guys know why they invited that. You guys know why I'm not even talking about Mr. Olympia. Who's talking about Mr. Olympia these days? That is not freaking passion. We're deep in the summer, right? We're almost August. Is that a passion out there? Do you guys feel, wow, passion, I can't, expectations? Bullshit. Let's be honest about it. That's that. So this is what was pretty much, uh, it was a conundrum, it was a dilemma for me, saying, hey, what is the legacy I'm going to leave to these guys? Of course, I'm going to still come and make videos, but for me, I have no dog in this game anymore. I can talk to anybody. I can talk to Phil Heath today, and I make, made a video like two days ago when I called him Phil the Gut Heat, so I will not sugarcoat it. Uh, I talked to Kai Green, I do consider him being my friend. I made him, he was top five uh, uh, pregnant bodybuilders. Big Rami, uh, he's my friend too. Last year I called him Medium Rami, on record. You guys know me, I'm not biasing this shit. Right, so for me there's no passion anymore. I was still documented, but for me, it's like TMZ. So I'm not gonna tell you, bro, this and that. So the message that you, not, you guys need to comprehend that I no longer idolize bodybuilders whatsoever, right? I know their financial situation is not the greatest, and I'm not even gonna tell you about their family problems, because it's not everybody who can sustain that lifestyle. You guys comprehend what I'm talking about? If you missed the video of Boston Lloyd, look at his physique, he's like 260, and take, take a look at every shit he takes. Now, great, now granted, he's not a genetic freak, but what he takes, he did not invent that. He's trying to emulate uh, the big guys out there, right? And I'm not even going to uh, go into the hypocrisy, the lies that these guys, the backstabbing, the bad mouthing that these guys go through and so on and so forth between them. There's no camaraderie up there. There's no brotherhood up there, right? So that's it. That's all. Uh, I'm not fooled anymore. And by the same token, I cannot sleep at night thinking that I'm fooling some teen who is 18 year old in Europe watching my videos about the best five five best backs in the world or I'm saying bro this is Dorian Esk or this is wow crazy front double biceps the peak is loyal right it's just entertainment dude you need to comprehend son when you come on YouTube after your your school you receive my notification take it as entertainment as funny rhymes funny things i'm telling you bro dice to the sucks this game is a loyal baby please and that's what i mean it is you know take it as it is it is entertainment do not bank on it do not tell your mama i'm gonna be a bodybuilder when i grow up that's a foolish dream bro just happen to lift right funny isn't it the guy who made the most viral videos about this pageant it's me I never met them, I never go to a show, I will never go to a show. I will never go to an expo now. And I'm not again, even gonna tell you about all the sponsors who contacted me lately, they want to promote me, this and that. I said, no, you can send me your stuff, you can send me your um, whatever, your supplements, your gear. I can wear it, I can rock it for you for free, but I'm never gonna be uh, taking a dollar from nobody. And nobody paid me a dollar, for that matter. That's that. So uh, hopefully I was able to convey the message. As you guys know, I don't even edit my video, so this is not an exception. I'm saying it as it is. Take it, take the value from it, and God bless you all. Seriously, I do salute you wherever you are, and, and I hope that I don't know if I'll, I'll continue making videos about this freaking uh, thing. I'll probably make funny videos as anecdotal or as a TMZ, just reporting about it for the hell of it. But do I love bodybuilding? I'm not gonna lie to you. Louis Marco does not love bodybuilding whatsoever. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It is what it is. I have hundreds of thousands of followers. I have in excess, I don't know, like 200, almost like 250 million views. If I, if I count the, the, the videos I put private uh, about this uh, pageant, but all in all, I don't love it. And the message, I want to leave you with, do
do not be a bodybuilder. Just do not. We do not. You don't even know what's up there. Cars are rental. Debt is all over the place. Uh, lawsuits are in the game between some guys and their ex sponsors, for that matter. It's not a very, uh, very lush. Uh, it's not what what it seems on social media. Uh, take it as it is, as entertainment. That's it, right? Just that's it, and I cannot lie to you. So, uh, thank God, thank God, I'm 42, almost. Uh, you guys see the picture I'm, I'm publishing. Thank God, I stayed natty. I never put anything in my body. Never had a needle in in this freaking uh, body. It is where it is, and I thank God. I thank God. I just thank God. It was the best decision I took because I was passionate about it. And until today, I have no idea why I didn't do it. Because I moved from Algeria, I went to France, and then came here to Canada. I have no idea why I didn't do it. Because probably I was too busy studying or working or whatever. Granted, I hate blood, but is it the, the main reason? I don't know. But whatever it was, thank God I didn't do it. So if you kid are listening to me, you could have been my son. Think twice. If you have a passion have a passion about freaking soccer or basketball those ballers have money for real right and that they can make a living out of it in bodybuilding i'm so i've told you i mean number six in the world is not enough number five in the world is not enough for that matter right when i do an interview with a pro and as soon as i terminate the skype chat he told me bro i only have like 100 dollars left in my account that's bad by all accounts, that's bad. When you see the, the guy has like the biggest legs I've ever seen. The biggest legs nowadays in the circuit probably. Right? But that's that. God bless you. Uh, don't forget to whatever. Like the video if you comprehend. And please comment in the, uh, uh, in the section. That's it. Uh, give me your thought, what you think about it. But Louis Marco does not love bodybuilding and i do not want to convey a love for bodybuilding and i i do apologize from the bottom of my heart i'm really sorry if i give you a false impression uh, of, so, of so, um, some called fash, uh, passion of bodybuilding um, a long time ago right and i hope that you guys laughed about synthol videos about the bubble gut about people cheating uh, about whatever about some drama more than you took it seriously because it was not worth it. God bless you all and have a nice one.